Hey guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to Armored Warfare. So, some news to report today. They released a couple of new stuff on their page. It's talking about new events, the battle path finally closing out, what the new updates for the next stage in this season will be. So, go check that out. Not a, really a lot of information, just vague like they always are and eventually once the new patch is here they will release everything which will happen right as you're exploring it in game yourself which is usually what armored warfare likes to do and the only thing they will be changing what they discussed is ATGM mechanics and how they have changed because of the 0 0.28 update and how they're going to change going forward and so I have some good news and some bad news with that depending on how you play ATGMs and where you like to play them the good news, especially for me, if you saw my video yesterday, uh, the cornet, while it was improved, and like I showed you yesterday, that double missile feature is quite effective, and I do like it, they agree that it's still performing below average for an AFE at that tier, but the only other real AFE they have at that tier is the Sphinx, which needs to be seriously overhauled at least in their opinion it's I've never played it but in their opinion it's underperforming to a fault and so if you're a Sphinx player and you don't enjoy the experience at tier 10 right now in the next iteration of Armored Warfare I think it's 0 0.282 or at least that's what I'm going to call it they're going to rework that they are also going to rework the cornet and make it more powerful so I'm very happy with that and I hope the Sphinx players will be happy with the changes um, for T15 Armada players who have complained either about how the missiles have changed or for people who have complained it's still too OP, Armored Warfare says that it's exactly where they want it to be now and they don't plan on making any more changes to the Armada. So, I mean, I don't think they're that crazy bad in PvP, but that's also because I try to avoid them so I don't know. And I also have never played it so I don't know if it performs worse now or better after the update. The next changes that come are at the mid and low tiers. So tier 5, which is I guess mid tier to be honest, it's right in the middle, they're changing the VBL and just the tow missile in general and they want it to perform better. They don't feel that the tow missile, they, they use the VBL as the example but I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that they're also going to include the Vizel in that because it also uses the tow launcher. And so they're going to rework that and rework other AFVs, which I'm assuming would be the BMP and the BMD series at that tier, to make their missiles more powerful and more reliable. At the one exception, which is the IT-1. So if you have the IT-1 and you really like it, I love it, it is OP. I mean, it does 800 to 1,000 damage every 10 seconds. It's a great tank destroyer. It's a great missile weapon system. However, it has finally been caught by the Armored Warfare uh, development team, and so they are planning to nerf it in the future. I don't know if that'll happen in the next update or later down the line, but if you really enjoy the IT-1, just know it's going to get nerfed. Some bad news. And bad news if you enjoy going around in your tier 5 tanks and not having to worry too much about ATGMs because now you'll have to and then for mid tier tier 7s it's just a case by case basis what they want to do with it um, I don't really know of any tier 7s that are really bad there's some that are really annoying like the NM142 it's not OP it's quite reliable though and so it's annoying to play against with the top down missiles um, but it's balanced because the top-down missiles only do about 400 damage instead of the full 800. And then, I guess the VBL Ingua would be another really annoying one, but... I, I don't think it's overpowered. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see for Tier 7 and Tier 6. But for Tier 5, they're planning on buffing ATGMs, with the one exception. And for Tier 10, they're planning on buffing the AFEs. So for me, that's very good news on both accounts, but if you don't worry about a ATGMs at Tier 5 and now realize you're going to have to, that's bad news. And also, if you're used to just spamming Cornets or the Sphinx and not worried about them, 
and now you're going to have to worry about them. Bad news for you. But I digress. That's as that's all I have for updates right now in Armored Warfare. And the rest is just going to be gameplay. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's, you know, watching and subscribing and everybody's interacting with me, but I did get a request to continue doing the Zongfang Tech Tree and just playing through that. I'm not going to do vehicle showcases of this tech tree, but I am going to talk about how I moved through it, what I would recommend unlocking, what suits my play styles, and what are some of my favorite vehicles, because I feel like you guys already know what are some of my least favorite. And so that'll be, mostly this video will just be walking through the entire line, with simple explanations at each branch or each vehicle that I enjoy, how to play it, and then some PvP gameplay in those vehicles, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so here we have Zongfeng's tech tree or dealer tree. And just first things first, this tech tree has changed tremendously since I gr you know, I first did the grind through it. And that was a recent change, so I don't know if you've been playing for a while and this isn't a new truck tree for you then don't worry about it you've gotten to some of the higher tiers it's alright but if you're just starting especially if you're just starting armored warfare with the Israeli update over this past summer I think it was in August I believe it was August yeah in August they introduced this new concept which was that because these aren't nation tech trees there is no reason why they should be locked and so now you'll see a bunch of vehicles from different tech trees like the VBL the T72 the Centauro 105 that and the Challenger to you know one that are in this particular tech tree and then throughout you'll see it at random and it, the idea is that you can play vehicles from this dealer to get vehicles in other dealers if you don't particularly like one set of play styles or if you're more prone to grinding. What I mean by that is when I first played through this tech tree, I went the AFV line immediately. So just aside from being the Chinese line, Zhang Feng is also the artillery line for this game. He's the only person who um, has artillery that's unlockable and he's also the Czech slash Polish line and so I immediately went for the Czech the Czech tanks and the Polish tanks and you know the first one he plays the OT-65A here which goes to the OA-82 which went to the OT-64 however with the new update they felt that since the OT-64 and OT-65 were not only from the same developmental time period but were from the same design branch quite literally they were designed in tandem um, at the same time trying to develop a modern Czech military the OA-82 while around at the same time was not a recon or APC vehicle like the other two and so they moved it from this position and placed it here where you can now get the VBL through grinding this vehicle and that makes it different because the VBL previously went through the XM-800 law. A good tank, nothing wrong with that, but I guess if you don't want to grind the LAV-150, which I don't know why you would, because it's overpowered, it's one of the best vehicles in the game, and you didn't want to play the XM-800 to get the VPL and do all that, you could do it through the OA-82. Or, if you're playing this tech tree from before, the Israeli update, then you know, and I've already done a vehicle showcase on the OT-64, so you know how terrible this vehicle is, and how hated it was, so a lot of people didn't really want to play through the OA-82, which I personally think is a great combat car, um, just to get to this one. And so if you have been grinding it, or you have the vehicle, you think it's great, but you don't really know why you're playing it, now you can get the VBL, which arguably plays a little bit like it they're both very small very fast so it makes sense and that's the same with every vehicle here you know the type 80 can go to the t72 for whatever reason we don't want to play three different t72s 
you can do it this way. And if you don't like the Chinese MBTs like I don't, then you can grind and get Russian MBTs, which are much better. The only weird one here is the Centaur 105 and the Challenger 1. And the reason I appreciate that they're here, but I think they're a little weird, is because they come off the artillery branch. And now before this update, all these went in sequence, run right after the other. So you would have to grind the M108, then this, then the M109, then, you know, the Akatesia, then the Palmaria, then the, you know, and you would just go back and forth through artillery. And it's not only not a popular class just because it's artillery, but it's also PvE restricted, so not a lot of people played it. There's no reason to. You're just going from one artillery vehicle to another, so you really have to be a collector and really have to enjoy the vehicles to play it. I played it because as a collector, I do not enjoy artillery at all. But now I'm grinding my tier 7 Italian artillery piece because I want this Centaur 105. And while I could just go through and do it through the tank destroyer line, this makes it because I didn't have the LAV 600. I haven't bought it didn't grind it but I was grinding this and I did have this artillery piece just for you know just to collect it and so because of that now it gives me a reason to continue to play this vehicle instead of having to buy now the tier 6 tank destroyer I can just play a vehicle I already have and get the Centauro so I do appreciate that all those cool weird tie-ins aside this is still a very strong line and still I think a very viable one if you're a heavy AFE player because while you might struggle with the OT65 and the OT64 which they're both good and bad in the same way I think the OT65 is much better but that's just because it's that tier 3 than the OT64 but you know everybody plays differently however once you get to the BVP M2 everything changes this is one of the best IFVs or heavy APCs or AFVs sorry in the game and this is a branch where you really explore what that means so it's always been in the game like oh you know you have light AFVs or recon like the OT65 or the OA82 and then you have heavy ones like the OT64 or the Roselmach and so the difference really is between APCs and infantry fighting vehicles, but in mo Armored Warfare, they're all AFEs, just to keep it simple. And so this line, you get to explore the heavier side of AFEs, and this is a very good introduction to that line. Not only is it 30mm cannon, great, without, it doesn't get Peli or Hesh or any special ammunition like the Warrior at Tier 7 does or the BBL does. It just has straight APC, but it's still very good, and the two missiles it has are very effective. So if you grind the OT-64, which is very hard, do not expect this tank to play anything like it. It will be the reward for getting through the OT-64. It is incredible. It's good at PvP, but it's great at PvE. It absolutely shreds, and I think every single AFE after it is the same in this line. The ZBL-08 is the next tier 6 AFV, which it used to be at tier 7, and I think I mentioned this before, and I might do a vehicle showcase on it, because it used to be the most hated AF, well, one of the most hated, and this is why this line's not popular, you don't see a lot of people playing it, because the OT-64 was really a bad grind, and it's hard, and then the ZBL-08 was another really bad grind that was really hard, but I enjoyed it at tier 7. I thought it was just fine. It couldn't play PvP to save its life, but again, back then, you were just in skirmishes, so everybody that hated it, you know, you have to realize they were just in teams of three at close range with the ZBL-08. Its cannon couldn't penetrate, and its missiles are not the most accurate. They are very hard to control. And so because of that, Armored Warfare felt that it wasn't performing where they wanted it to be, so instead of changing any of the characteristics of the vehicle, they just dropped it by a tier and reportedly that made it a lot better and a lot more people enjoyed it. I don't know, I haven't played it. I played it and grinded it as tier 7, so I have no idea what it's like at tier 6. But if it was good for me there, I'm sure it'll still be great here. It's a nice AFE. The only problem is that now it's locked to just the ST1. Before, it went along the same line as the Rosomach, and 
I believe you could have unlocked the Rosamok M1 with it. Now it's just the ST1. That's not a problem. I unlocked the ST1 with it anyway because I already have the Rosa. And it's fine. Now I want to talk about the two Polish AFVs that are in the game because they are my favorite vehicles of all time. And something that's really interesting is that you'll see that you can unlock it now with the Type 92. So again, as you know, I'm not a fan of Chinese MBTs. I don't like them, and I don't really see the incentive of getting them. But if you don't want to make this ridiculous grind through all the Czech AFVs, which I personally, if you haven't decided where you want to go in this line yet, highly recommend doing this. But say you're watching this video and you're like, Oh wow, the Rosamac does sound really good. I'll get into why it's so great in a few minutes. I want that, but I don't. You know, I like this, but I hate this. Well, if you're a good MBT player, now all you have to do is grind and you can unlock the tier 7 Rosa. And so that allows, again, more players to vary their play styles and experience new vehicles. So we'll get into the MBTs and what I think of them. I've already belabored the point in my other two videos about this tech tree, so that's why I'm keeping I'm going to keep these brief. But the Type 92 does lead into this, so you can essentially, especially now while this is on sale, I recommend grinding this, getting this vehicle, because at the very least, if you don't like the Rosamok, you'll have a placeholder here where you can go either there or to the rest of the Chinese MBTs, and, and you'll get to skip everything at the top here. Now the Rosamok series is absolutely terrible grinding at first, and what I mean by that is it has, let me pull it up for you, it has no missile complement, that's what you'll see first. All it has is a 30 millimeter gun and then a recon package, and this is where you're going to explore what is a heavy AFV and what does it do. And the reason I say that is because this is, for all intents and purposes, a heavy AFV, but you can't use it that way. It's bulky, it's got good enough armor, far better than most, but it's designed solely for recon. And so when you're grinding this at first, moving up the line, it seems unnecessary, it seems really hard, it's a difficult tank to master. But what makes it worth it is you'll see it gets Peli rounds. Now, you'll see there it stands for Penetrator with Enhanced Lateral Effect. Essentially, which you're looking at the animation there, it is a round that hits a tank and then explodes. And what that means is, the Rosomach, which is using a 30mm cannon anyway, which doesn't really do a lot of damage, 21 to 26, it's going to do that damage across all surfaces of a tank that's flat. And so what that means is, and this is why I loved it so much in PvP, is that if you're facing a Challenger 1 and none of the MBTs on your team can penetrate it, it's slowly moving up, you're going to get spotted, at which point the enemy team will kill you. All you have to do is shoot where the driver hatches or slightly above the turret, and all these rounds will bounce off the gun and explode upwards and down into the tank. And it is crazy. I've done that to Abrams, I've done that to Leopards, and it really becomes overpowered with the Peli rounds because you can penetrate almost, and I'm going to say almost because obviously this has changed in update 0 0.28, how things operate. Now the mechanics of Peli haven't changed, but some armor values have of other tanks, and I haven't played this in a long time. And I also want to make a point that it's all very circumstantial, which I think everybody gets. But those disclaimers aside, you can penetrate almost every vehicle in Armored Warfare at tier 7 or lower, frontally, with this vehicle, without getting spotted. That's important, because now it turns this into a very aggressive martyr. And if you're a fan of that German AFV, that premium AFV with Peli, you're going to be a fan of this. It operates the same and it is incredibly effective. And of course, with the modifications for smoke grenades and that kind of thing, which you do get an upgrade there, and oops, wrong Rosamuck. You do get the one upgrade, I don't have it. You get a spall liner, which adds 150 HP. You're gonna have some more defense, but it, again, is all geared towards recon and firing on the move. And that is so important. 
and also just it makes it so effective at sniping and that's why I love this vehicle and why it was hard for people to get you know understand it because it doesn't operate like any other AFE the KTO Rosamach is a tank destroyer it is something you should snipe from the back with or from the side flank with it you're going to spot a lot of people and you're going to kill a lot of people that way even though it just has a 30 millimeter auto cannon and another thing I forgot to mention with the update of the Israeli MBTs, I forget what update that was, it does all IFVs and AAPCs get the troop compartment, which just helps you capture bases, and it reduces your repair time. That comes standard. I mean, the BVP has one. At least it should, yep. Um, so it's really not special to the Rosamach, but it is nice. Now, getting to the Tier 8 one, this vehicle is incredible. And the reason is because that armor upgrade, the QNET slat armor, makes it so heavy. And the missiles, which they changed at some point because they no longer operate the same way that they used to when I played it. But it gets the Peli rounds, like the first one, which are still just as incredible at tier 8. But it also gets this crazy missile complement. Oh, uh, where is it? No, I don't know why I can't see it. Hmm. It used to show you. Hold on, let me go in the garage. Ba, 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 ba. There. Yeah, you get the Spike ER ATGM, which has crazy penetration. Now, and it's self guided. That's another important part. This is an introduction to self guided missiles for anybody that hasn't played them. Now, just like you saw in my Cornet gameplay, again, that 1,000 millimeters of penetration is circumstantial to the vehicles and how it hits. It doesn't get the full effective range, just like the Cornet doesn't. But at Tier 8, that is more than enough to go through almost every MBT out there. And so not only do you get the advantages of being great at reconnaissance, great at sniping, but you get this missile component that makes this vehicle so incredible to play and from there you get the WPB Anders which is one of the best light tanks in the game and the Wilkes which is one of the best TDs and so that's kinda how I went up this line is through these heavy AFVs and this I'm gonna do some Rosalind gameplay today maybe both of them and just show you what that's about now before I do that Chinese MBTs you know they play like Russian MBTs not the best in the world, not the worst, not a fan of them at high tiers, very effective at low tiers, very fun. You can get into the Russian MBT line with them, you can get into the Rosamok line with them, or you can just grind. Whatever you want to do, however you play MBTs, there's going to be something to like about them, but they are known for one thing, that is being the really quick option. They are very fast for MBTs, they have the best ground resistance of all MBTs in the game. And so... Yeah, you can develop that to any place all you want. If you like reconnaissance, if you like spotting, and you want to play like a heavily armored light tank, you can do that. If you want to be aggressive, fire on opponents, and then run away quickly, you can do that. They are great, but I want to warn you, that only starts with the Type 85 2M at Tier 5. The Type 82, the Type 79, 69, and 62 are not fast. They are not quick. They're not as lightly armored as other tanks, and they, you know, they are going to play exactly like the T-62s and, you know, the, um, oh god, what is the Russian one? It's the T-62 and then T-64. Thank you. So if you like the Soviet MBTs at low tiers, these are going to play exactly the same. At high tiers, they're the quick, aggressive option for active spotting, active targeting, active capping just moving around your enemies, being constantly in motion, that's what Chinese MBTs are good at. So, you know, that's my brief little plug for those. Now, I, the unique line here, and I'm struggling to find words for it, because it's like, I don't want to say anything bad about it, but there's not a whole lot of good to say about it. And that's not like, it's not like it's a shitty line, the artillery. It's just that it's a very weird one. It's very unique. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's not good or bad. I'm struggling to find a way to say it that doesn't make it sound 
bad, because if you want to play artillery, I definitely encourage that you do. But it's just awkward. It seems like a very awkward component in Armored Warfare. Um, you know, in an age where modern artillery pieces are used less and less in favor of, you know, multiple rocket launch systems or airstrikes or guided missile weapon systems or mortar strikes you know it just seems like an odd fit and to break away from all the problems that world of tanks has with artillery which is still if anybody if anybody here by the way watches my world of tanks videos and plays them and knows that i talk about them the plug here for world of tanks is they are rebalancing artillery yet again so for anybody who plays Armored Warfare has no idea what that means. Artillery, when it comes into PvP, is super... Because they can kill almost any vehicle from very far away without getting spotted and do crazy amounts of damage. Very slowly and with really low accuracy, but they can do it. And so World of Tanks has had a notorious history of artillery and... Everybody hates it. They rebalanced it. Now this is going to be the fourth time they've rebalanced artillery. Artillery players are never really happy with it. Normal players are never really happy with what artillery is going to be changed to do. And there's no real middle ground that's been found yet. And so to avoid all of that controversy, Armored Warfare locks artillery to PvE only. So you can't go into glops. You can't go into random battle. Or... I mean... They just started doing the battalion once, I guess, not really a big factor for anybody, but you also can't bring it in there, in case you were wondering. All you can do is play missions or spec ops with them. And while that's nice, it prevents all that horrible stuff from happening, if you hate artillery, like I hate playing against artillery, it really restricts artillery players from doing a whole lot. While it is nice for people who casually play artillery who are just learning to go into PvE and shoot at a bunch of bots because they'll cluster, it's hard to really find incentive to continue grinding up the line. Because, you know, artillery or, in this game, they're just SPG, self-propelled guns. Because there's no real reason to do it unless you really like it. And so for anybody who doesn't play artillery, Essentially what it is, is you sit in the back of the map, and you get a top-down view of the battlefield. And you launch long-range strikes at the enemy. Like, you know, artillery. That's the job. And so the reloads are super long, the bloom is crazy huge and crazy inaccurate, and it's a chore to learn how to really play artillery well. But it pays off. I mean, once you do nail a hit, you can get a, quite a lot of damage. You can get quite a lot of support experience from playing artillery. And so it's a unique class that plays entirely all on its own. Like nothing else in this game. And that's why I would recommend you to play it. The M108 was fun. I enjoyed it at Tier 3. You know, I would recommend if you're moving up this line, there's no reason to unlock it. I mean, you're going to go through the Type 69 anyway to get to the Type 82, which means you're going to automatically unlock the M108. So just get it, play it, see if you like artillery, see if you don't, see if you enjoy the PvE aspect or if it's just not worth it. Because it is really unique, and that's the positive, that's the good thing I would say, you know, as for artillery. Really positive, it's unique. It's different, and it's hard. And so, moving on from that, I will say Armored Warfare has approached artillery in a really unique way compared to other games that have it, i.e. you know, World of Tanks. And that is, you'll see it's split into two branches now, which I already mentioned wasn't the case. And the reason they did that is it's the difference between what I like to call assault SPGs and traditional SPGs. And so... You'll see the M109 here, which is famous. It is the huge American SPG from the Cold War period. And why is traditional... Oh yeah, I can't preview it because I own it. Is that it just has a really big gun, only fires high explosive, just like all artillery pieces. 
with a reload time of 10 seconds. So if you're a challenger player, you're used to that. And it has no real armor, it has no real accuracy. You can't really, you can shotgun people with this, but it's a very slow moving, very big gun kind of artillery piece. It's gonna sit in the back and fire just straight up and do damage that way. Whereas this Russian vehicle, you can get away with playing it, the 2S1, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna butcher that name, smaller caliber gun right the 122 millimeter I think this is a what 155 right smaller caliber gun you automatically see it's not only a smaller vehicle but that means it's more mobile you can move into positions with this and use it as a shotgun vehicle or shotgun TD more readily than you could this vehicle for obvious reasons I mean just visually you can kind of understand why that would be the case and so that's why I would encourage you to play artillery. That would be my second reason. Obviously, I moved down the more traditional line with this tier 7, which is also huge. Not really effective at being a TD. You don't get good accuracy. You're going to miss a lot of shots when you're playing as a shotgun vehicle because you can't actually zoom in. So you just kind of have to eyeball it. But you get away with it a lot more when you're playing the Russian ones which lead into the Chinese. This PLZ-89 is the epitome of what is assault SPGs. It is very fast, very mobile, and very good at getting close to enemies and absolutely destroying them. It's, it's a faster, lighter, easier way to play artillery if you're used to tank destroyers compared to the traditional ones. The only reason I think it's weird is because even though that's like a really unique thing to do, and if you enjoy that place, which I do, so I don't know why I went this... Oh, I do know why. It's <laughs> Centauro, but if you enjoy it, you can play these vehicles, and it's great. However, it's gonna they both lead to the Paladin, which is obviously a traditional SPG, and will lead then to the PLZ-05 or the Panzer Habeitze 2000, which are both traditional. So, I mean, it's not really... That's what I mean. It's It's weird because it's not necessary to go down this line there's no benefits of going down this line long term but if you just want something that's really unique and not really bad in terms of just grinding like traditional artillery you have the option of assault spgs or just spgs in general and so that's it for the zongfeng tech tree um and how i moved up it and so I'm going to just play some games in the Rosamok, and I'm going to do some artillery games for people who are not really familiar with that. I'm not a great artillery player, but I'm not a great player in general. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes, and kind of hope you guys get a feel for this tech tree as an avenue to do many different things and many different combat roles instead of just being straight Chinese MBTs. So hopefully that'll work and we'll see. I'm going to try to do some PvP games in the AFB, so all my PvE games should just be artillery, but we'll see how it plays out um, by the time I finally put this video up and record it. Alright, so we actually got into a global operations game in the Rozo Mark 1. I I call it the Rozo's, the Rozo Mark, whatever. And we are on, I just read it, Desert Crossing? Yeah. Which is the big map that we were on with the Coronet the other day. So yeah, I like playing this vehicle in Glops because it is effective at eliminating pillboxes or AI players really quick. We got hit by that sprut pretty hard though, but that's generally what you want to do is go after the lightly armored vehicles with this at first. And then work your way up to more dangerous vehicles. And why work your way up? Because if you're like me and you're a coward, <laughs> you just kind of want to get some damage in before you fight for your life. We are capturing point two. Enemy is capturing point one. So yeah, we just hit him for a thousand. Let's see if we can hit this key. Yep. 841. So 
We just did 1,048 damage to the tier 9 Terminator 2 frontally, which doesn't sound like a lot when you're using missiles that are this crazy, but trust me, it's insane. And we pick up that kill. Alright, now we're just going to cap. So yeah, you can kind of see already that it is a heavy AFV. It is aggressive, and it is good at being aggressive, and it feels good to be aggressive in it. I love this vehicle. Sweet God, I love this vehicle. It really does make me want to get the, um... God, what is it called? Oh, the PB Anders. Yeah. I was spotted by that striker. I'm hoping he'll pop his head out again. Identified. Truck. He does. He picked up some damage. He's probably not going to come out now. So I spooked him like that, but... Oh, well. Nope. Oh, lag. You're going to kill me one of these days. I'm always so nervous, especially with lag going off of this ship, because if you fall, you're pretty much dead. I felt like that in my Challenger one time. It was hilarious. Um, but it hurt. First time I almost instant get, I got instant killed in a challenger. Alright, so we eliminate that target. We're gonna pop smoke. And just keep driving. So yeah, it's um... It's a good vehicle. That's two kills now. We're up to 3600 damage, which is not a lot. But we just started the game. Black company, capture the mark location and we'll set up 80 pillboxes right away. Got spotted by an AI vehicle there. Right, not to worry. This is another thing, we can run pretty fast in this thing. I think its top speed is almost 100 kilometers an hour. Not quite, but close. Identify target. Oh wow, I didn't expect him to come down here. But you can see how I'm heading him with the pele rounds in the front. And the reason I'm using those instead of my missiles is simply because I panicked. <laughs> like, there's no tactical reason for that. We are capturing point three. I panicked because I legitimately did not think that he was going to come to kill me, but yeah, it is an AFE, so it's a juicy target. I'm going to spawn and try to support the TDs over here and see if I can pick up some more kills. Help him clear, well, not clear, but actually capture point three. So yeah, I mean, first impressions we with this, just in this it game, we'll send in a drone. it's pretty great. It's a pretty strong vehicle. Um, and you can play it like a tank destroyer if you really had to. <coughs> Excuse me. But... Right now, especially in this matchup, I'm feeling pretty confident that we don't have to play it like that right now. We might later in the game when it gets more intense. Looks like this Merkava is about to eat it. Yeah. Alright, so let's take this bridge. Watch out, they have AT teams set up. Identify. Right. So, see, that's the recon part. That's why you want to be constantly moving until you get spotted like I just did. Oh, uh, the objectives change. Yeah, you can spot vehicles rapidly. Oh, wow, what? Yeah, there's a, man, there's a missile cruiser. There's two missile cruisers in this port. I, I, I never noticed these before. Cool, 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 cool. So yeah, I'm just completely wasting my time here. I had no idea there's that many ships. I mean, I know there was that one. It's like firing missiles and junk. But, huh. I don't need to learn something new every day. So, now my next objective is just to get across the bridge here and support my team. I literally can't believe I've played this. I cannot believe. I guess I thought they were buildings. I never noticed these are ships. They're whole ass ships. Just here. Now. Here and now. Ships. Let's 
see, I'm gonna switch to my spiker. Oh, what? Oh. See, I get scared of everything in this thing. Well, like I said, it it does play aggressively, but that doesn't mean I'm just gonna go out and like kill myself. Hope at least one of those hit, but I doubt it. What good luck. He just keeps hitting the bridge. Until I can find out what's going on behind me for whatever reason, I can't back up. Yeah. What? Where did I go? Where did that missile just go? It doesn't matter. Objectives have changed, and we're really not doing that much damage to these Merkavas. Oh, shit, there they are right now. No, 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 God, please! I'm glad I got that on film. So the enemy team <laughs> just solved my Merc of a problem for me. <laughs> they didn't kill me, but they did kill the two Merc of is chasing me. So hats off to the enemy player who launched that airstrike. Thank you very much. It helped. Although I am nearly dead. Oh god. teammate kills me now. That'd be so funny, but it'd be karma. But he doesn't. So, yeah, this is not the best damage game for this vehicle. I have not been properly fighting because I keep getting locked down with those Mercos. This is what you want to be doing. Hitting TDs, hitting other AFVs, punishing them for playing the same type of vehicles you're playing, because that's just the name of the game. Nobody should be playing an AFV but you. It's kind of the attitude you need when you're... No, I'm just kidding, but... Uh, it, is, it is good practice to not go after MBTs and to go after lightly armored vehicles for obvious reasons. I hope I don't get spotted while I'm up. Oh, I'm alright. I'm still spotted. Oh. Now I'm spotted because I pop smoke. See, this is, it's paradoxical. Did that to myself. God. That sucks. Alright, I'm not spawning over there again. What doesn't suck is that this is going to be a pretty big win for us. <laughs> What does suck is that I'm only done 4,500 damage. What? No, 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 wait. They're really carpet bombing their own team. I think that's something beautiful, though, when an enemy team just carpet bombs itself. It's like, it's whatever, right? Let's get off my nose. Trying to actually get into combat now, but not gonna make it before the game's over. Yeah. That could have gone so much better if I didn't get so obsessed with attacking those Merkavas. But that's my fault. So, don't let that influence your opinion on this vehicle. Wait until I play another game, because I'm pretty sure we're in, like, last place. Yeah. 
Not experience, though. Yeah, we did pretty good with experience. Not great, but, you know, you get that spotting damage. Still a good tank, even with my missteps. So pretty effective. Hope I can get into another game pretty quick. That'd be great. That'd be great. So yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite vehicles to play. It's an absolute joy, and it's... I don't want to say it's dynamic, because obviously all AFVs use the same build. Missiles and gun. It's not unique. But I feel like it plays as smoothly uh, as like a... Um, oh, is it a BMP or a BMD? I don't remember. But like at tier 6, I know both both branches do it, so that's why I can't remember which one. I think it's the BMP3. Um, you get a gun launcher, which means you get to fire high explosive missiles, and then you get the 30 millimeter coaxial on that. And it's very smooth in operation. It's an absolutely devastating AFV in the right hands. Uh, I.e. not mine. <laughs> And so this plays as smooth as that, I just feel like it's a better choice. It fits my playstyle better. So, I mean... I don't like doing this live because it's like I don't have a lot to say the whole time. But what I want to say... And maybe I'm trying to find a good way to say it, but I don't feel really confident about this game right now. <laughs> like this is not good, good, um, good global operations map. Always fun to be here, but boy, oh boy, I don't like seeing tier tens in this. But I don't want to make you think that you can't deal with tier tens in the Rosal Mock, because you definitely can. You just have to be good. And while I've grinded through this whole tank and I've played it for a very long time, I don't know, I just feel like some tier 10s are just, they're very high powered, very high octane vehicles. <laughs> oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. What in the hell? See what I fucking mean? <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that? I don't even know how he did that. How did I get one shot by a leopard? What was that about? That can't be possible. Cornet ATGM. Aha. Uh -huh. So I didn't get one shot by a leopard, okay. I did get almost completely one shot by that cornet though. Uh, so yeah, that's what I mean. I wanted to get that point. I didn't think that their team would be that aggressive. But yeah, this is one of those scenarios where you're going to have to just pull back and snipe with it. it it'll do that well enough, you know. I think it's not a whole, it's not a complete loss just because I'm bottom tier. Alright, got some good shots into that guy. And some good shots into that guy. And now I'm gonna try to make that cornet pay. Got him. Kill the cornet. Get some revenge on him. <laughs> and see what else we can just, you know, shoot at right now. There was a Merc of a, in the town somewhere, or in the plant somewhere. This is also a good time to point out that Peli, while it does penetrate everything in its path at tier, it 
obviously does not retain that at higher tiers depending on what kind of armor you're firing at. So the ERA plating, it's not blocks, it's like plate armor of the Leopard 2 AX. Um, that is that vehicle, right? Yeah, the 2 AX. That's to remember, will not be penetrated top down by pelly rounds, as you just saw. That doesn't mean you can't shoot them. Like I'll <laughs> I'll pen test this one right here. Just kidding, I won't do that. But you can absolutely pen the sides. I believe it's always the engine, maybe the sides. But yeah, not frontally. So that's one of the vehicles that you'll have to watch out for if you get into matchups like this. Is that Leopard 2AX? It will be pretty effective at blocking not only the ATGMs, which I won't use it on that, but it'll also block the Pele rounds. I oh know they're gonna launch an airstrike. Our Merc of a four, I'm hoping, gets to. I was hoping our Merca before would get to the gunship. Or I might try to get to the gunship. Because if once the enemy does, it's so annoying. I don't think I can get to the gunship safely without being obliterated. I know, I know, I know, I can see them on the map, Jesus. Don't be that guy, don't keep pinging like an area, like, as if the whole team doesn't already realize it. I'm not going in there alone, there's so many MBTs right there, how did I not spot them? I'm gonna try my heart, nope, already spotted. I'm waiting for some MBT to just come around that corner and obliterate me. They're gonna go for that power up or wild card, whatever. Damn it! God, where is the team? What are they doing? See, maybe I should be pinging. Maybe I shouldn't yell at pingers. Like once they get that gunship, it's gonna be game over for us. I mean, we're already losing. Ah, oh, Jesus, jeez, Louise, how the fuck is this hard to get? What was that armada doing? Oh man. This is this is a bad game. This is just straight up a bad game. I don't know what our tier tens are doing, but they're not doing their. <laughs> see that respawn? It just dropped. It just dropped my Rosamok down. Yeah, see, a thousand damage is not only not good, it's downright awful. But I can't even get into position to fire on these vehicles because at these tiers, I am a support vehicle, and I can't support people that don't play. Like I don't, I don't get it. I'm gonna try to capture this and just use it, but hopefully we'll pick it up. <sighs> I'll put it right there. Hope we will be able to salvage this game. Back there. I want to know who's spotting me right now. Like, like that's what I want to know. Is that enemy rose on my head? That yeah, it is. All right, we're getting the gunship though, so that's always nice. Finally.
We didn't get the gunship? Are you serious? Oh my lord! I fucking hate games like this. This is so annoying. Jesus. Where nothing goes right at all and some of the enemy team is just unstoppable. This is getting ridiculous. I don't know why our team can't just like focus up here, work together. There's Centaur over there. Spotted, but just trying to get to a point. Gunship is in the air, which is very good. So, yeah, I couldn't even outshoot that Centauro with not only the lag, but just <laughs> the lag and lack of <laughs> support. Like, I don't get it. We have to all capture seven. I don't know why there weren't more people on seven. And I don't know what this T14 Armada is doing. Is he the same one that like flipping stuff over or whatever? Yeah, he's the only one in the game. Yeah, it's him. Not, not very helpful. That is another cool feature of this game, by the way, with the ATGM changes, is I believe that he is using right now a soft kill APS, and so if you're using your self-guided missile system just like in the real world, and that operates, it'll just throw the missile off like it's supposed to in the real world. It's just, it's cool. Nice little tidbit. Of course, hard kill will just shoot the missile, but it's cheating, right? It's not cheating, it's just... That's just how APS works. Also, that's what I was talking about yesterday with the cornet. It's the same thing, only it just takes a little bit longer. You have to trigger the APS with one missile, and then while it's reloading, buy the other one. Is that yeah. It's not impossible to do, just having the... Alright, we got these pillboxes, but they take us out. I don't know who is spotting me right now. Like, from fucking where? Where could they possibly. Oh. There he is. A jerk. <laughs> I'm just completely baffled, but it's just a light tank. I mean, I don't know what else it would be. Of course, it's just a light tank just chilling somewhere. Close by. Yeah, not really a good game. I mean, it might have gone better if we had more... Team cohesion? <laughs> but, we didn't, so... Oh well. Could have done a lot of things better. Could have just stuck to the sniping role. Which is what I was supposed to do, but... Oh well, it's gonna be a defeat. Ooh, oh well, so two bad games in a row in the Rose Mock. Only 4,000 damage dealt. Oh, that's alright. Okay, so 
let me explain that, because I fall prey to that all the time. And it's like, why is my damage different? So, in Armored Warfare's Global Operations mode, you have all the wild card stuff. Shooting the wild cards, i.e. destroying pillboxes, shooting down drones, all that. You have to damage it. And before the update... Um, not 0 0.28, but the one before it. Forget which one it was. But they introduced the ability to gain that damage, to actually count that damage that you do to non player, you know, vehicles or, in, you know, installations. And so that's why in the game I had 6,000 damage, because I was shooting all those pillboxes like an idiot. And then at the end of the game, it's only 4,000. And the reason that is, is because it adds that to your damage counter, which is cool. But then they take it away again for the end of game, for the um, post-battle stats. And so it really doesn't count, does it? Um, but it is, I guess, an ego boost to see that kind of stuff while you're in-game. Because it makes you feel like you're doing a lot of damage when you're not. So, not really as much damage as I had hoped to do, but still a good AFV. Just bad games. <laughs> I'm gonna play a, like an actual random battle with it and see how that goes and then all artillery after that. And I might make a part two video to this one because this is already a pretty long video because I covered most of the tech tree. So I might just leave it here with the two games and then in the next video, or part two, it'll be the artillery vehicle gameplay. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, if you stay this far and saw those two bad games, and you think the Rosamok isn't great, trust me it is, and I'll be able to show you that later. And thank you so much for watching that much. Obviously, stay tuned um, for the rest of it. And, you know, throw up a like if you enjoyed it, or subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.